Hello guys, this is IDQ and in this video we'll go over things to do and not do at lower MR. I've seen this comment on a YouTube video so I decided to make it since I uh, haven't seen anyone do it. I might be wrong, but you know. If you like this type of content, go to gamersclass.com for just $9.99 a month, watch masterclasses with pro players, join exclusive live sessions, and get 24-7 access to coaches and other high MMR players. Get full control of your rank games and start owning with our Supreme Dota 2 membership. Uh, first thing would be to not miss free kills. For example, this Juggernaut is gonna miss a free kill just because I don't think he understood uh, how his ability works the spin as we will see here so he's spinning on Pudge but then he's using right clicks and stuff on him which he shouldn't do this was a free kill right Pudge is 370 HP if Lion just hits him and Juggernaut spins he's dead with no way to escape because he's too slow 280 movement speed Juggernaut is uh, more there's a bug the bug because of the this he has more movements with them but either way so w what you should be doing when spinning it's clicking m move to patch for example or whatever hero you're chasing so even in fog your hero will just uh, go towards him or just chase him around so they can't really juke you in any way shape or form by pressing m to the hero that you want to uh, chase they will basically move on him he also pr uh, pressed the right click on patch which means that he uh, the hero, even though he's spinning, the animation, attack animation is gonna go off, so we will fall behind uh, in chasing Pudge. As you see right now, he clicked on Pudge, he attacked him, but he's spinning, so he doesn't do any damage, and Pudge is able to just run away, which normally he wouldn't be able to do right there. He was dead. So first thing would be to not miss three kills. The second thing that we should do is think about the synergy with our teammates. For example, in this lane, there's uh Tusker and Slaughter. So obviously when Tusker presses his E tag team, you wanna stun with uh Slithering Crush or just attack Spectre. Go on the enemies together at the same time. It's obviously a lot better than just uh solo and then your teammates come just ping or something and go at the same time. Press all your abilities together and it's almost guaranteed to get a kill. Especially if you're in a strong lane such as Slaughter Tusker. Another thing that we shouldn't do is get greedy. For example, let's look at this Juggernaut, right? He's half HP, less than half HP. Patch misses the hook, and then he decides to run in for no reason, right? Like, he could get a Patch kill, but Patch is position 4, he's lower level than him, and it doesn't really matter that much if he gets this Patch kill or not. Since X is highest net worth, his Patch is almost lowest net worth, right? So there is like no value in feeding this X by running in like this. We also know that he has Berserker Skull, so spin doesn't really do anything. So he just dies for a Pudge kill that uh, would have died anyway, right? The Pudge would have uh, gotten killed anyway by this task, as you can see, right? He died to tower, it didn't really matter that much. So try not to get greedy, since most of the time it's not good if you just overextend for kills and stuff like that. It won't be worth in the long run, even if he would get this Pudge kill you would have gotten like 100 gold or something like that, not that much, but X instead got 300 for him. So it's not worth to overextend and just be greedy. Another thing that lower MMR players do that is wrong, it's exactly what this Juggernaut is gonna do after he dies. He TPs exactly the same, in exactly the same lane, right? This X is um, level 7, has a Vanguard, like 1.4 thousand HP, 20 HP region with the Tango Strike. Uh, more than 10 HP regen per second. He's a lot stronger than him right now. So by going bottom again, you won't get anything, right? Since he's the weakest hero right now in their team, the weakest core. As you can see by network and obviously levels and stuff. This guy's not having a great game. By going bot, his game is getting even harder, right? Since he chooses to place himself in the way of uh, the strongest opponent, which is X. As we can see by network and you know levels and stuff, items. So because of that, he's going to end up dying again here. What he should be doing is either go top, try and pressure this tower, and make the enemies react to him, right? If he would TP here and just pressure tower, one hero, one opponent wouldn't be able to defend it, right? Because he has Omni Slash, Summon TPs in, Omni Slash, Spin, this guy's going to press ult, so someone's going to die. If they just send two heroes here, then you can just go back to the triangle and farm this, or even this. 
and Slardar, if he doesn't want to push this tower, he can just TP bottom afterwards. In that case, two heroes are top, not contesting you, because you can farm this and this, and Slardar is going to have a good lane bottom, because he will be either 1v2 or 1v1, which is okay by him. So instead of just returning to the same lane over and over again, he's 0-3 right now, just go jungle or try and apply pressure on other lanes, other towers, for example, as I said, top. Or even kill the enemy mid tower, or even the enemy hero. If he would pay attention to the score and what's happening in the game, he would see that Tasker is 1-4, right? He's having, great, uh, he's having a bad game, so he could just run up on him and then Omni's last spin, he would be dead. And try to make opponents react to you instead of you reacting to the opponent. Another thing that we shouldn't do is pull for no reason. For example, this Dark Willow is just going to pull the wave right now. Uh, pull this camp, I mean. The creep wave. So, and she was right here. As you see, the wave is pushing towards this tower, towards the Trolls tower. And it's gonna be three creeps, right? Uh, I will say one or two, since let's say this one dies. It's gonna be two creeps, but then another full wave. So what end up happening is that Trove will just get killed under tower. Just because she didn't have a wave here, right? There's just one creep there. Instead of these three creeps protecting Draw Ranger. So because of that it's really not good to pull like just so you feel like you did something, you pulled. See what I mean? It's just Draw is just gonna get dove here and yeah, killed. Because she didn't have this wave that just came under tower. So you can actually uh, hurt your carry by trying to pull, trying to help in that regard. Unless the wave is pushing towards the enemy tower, you shouldn't really pull, like almost never. Another thing that we should do every game is pay attention to the minimap, right? And what is happening in the map. For example, this PA is just farming bottom, and then she sees this legion commander. I mean, she should see the legion commander get ganked by the dire team. So. What is she gonna do? She's gonna leave? Uh, I guess she doesn't know yet that they will be coming bottom. So right now she should uh, understand that they will be coming bottom. In this exact moment. The thing is that they kill the Legion here, right? So what are the paths that they can take? One would be mid, to pressure mid tower, right? To have a purpose. But their mid tower, I mean, the Radiance Wave is getting pushed into uh, Dire's tower. So they're obviously not going to defend mid, right? They won't be here. Another thing that they could do is run bottom, which is the obvious play that they could make. Because they have no business being here, right? In draw space, in draw triangle to farm. They just got a kill here. They're bloodlusted. Okay, let's go get another kill. And since they're not mid, they will obviously not go top because they will get spotted by the tower, vision, and, you know, here, stuff like that. So they will obviously go bottom. And PA will still get caught here, I believe. Yeah, which was an obvious gank, as I said, right? She didn't have a TP. It's the same thing that I said before. It's gonna be 0 3 right now. And yeah. Just don't go to the same way. You can farm Ancient very easily with Blur. Another thing that I can showcase is exactly the same uh, instance would be this don't help your teammates. If, like, it's help your body syndrome or whatever it's called. Look at this. It's exactly what we're seeing, right? Legion just died and is going to TP in afterwards. And Huskar is going to TP in. When people are already dead, this guy is going to die most likely afterwards. And then he will Legion. Three people dead and then he still didn't cancel the TP. I mean, she, I guess. So she's going to get killed also. The same thing about Huskar. He's TPing, TPing, one guy's already dead, this guy's dying instantly, then this guy TPed in and this guy TPed in. Just don't do this, don't uh, continuously TP with like four people for no reason instead of, you know, trying to pressure other parts of the map and just feeding there. If a team fight is lost or you think that you can't really do anything right there, you just need to run away. For example, this region is very, very weak, right, in this instance. It's only level 7 on Legion, minute 13. They have a Necro level 11 running at them with McCann's, and this guy is level 10 on Tusk, and this guy is level 8. So he's obviously the weakest hero. Even if he could help here, he would do, like, nothing really. So they all just chain fit. Then that's uh, because they're trying to help their teammates for no reason. 
Another thing that we should always do is pay attention to our uh, teammates' items and obviously the enemies. But because we could buy like the same item, right? And they won't be as useful or as impactful as if uh, you would buy two different items that do other stuff. For example, our spirit just got an urn and Tusker is gonna buy an urn also. Exactly like the same instance. So you don't wanna buy two urns in the same team, would be one example, two mechs don't work also two blades stuff like that glimmer cape is okay but uh little items you don't really want to buy them so you just bought a urn so what happens is that if you are fighting with the uh, other teammate that has urn in this instance for example right here but let's say so as you can see uh task has two urn charges and uh, our spirit has zero. So, PA just died. This guy still has zero charges. And this guy has three charges. So, it doesn't work when you buy two of those same items. Right? So, you shouldn't really be doing this. It only works if the guy is closer. Who's closer gets the charges. Another thing that they did wrong this uh, is they bought two Orb of Venoms, right? Orb of Venom and then Tusk got Orb of Corrosion. But the thing is, uh, they slow exactly the same amount right so instead of completing this item that really doesn't give you anything besides just the hp right if you already have an orb of venom you could just buy the on this guy right if they both hit the same target they, it won't be slowed by more orb of venom stacks exactly like um orb of corrosion so they shouldn't really be buying the same items as I said before. Another common item that people are buying is Desolator. If you're playing a PA and you have a TA in your team, I see in lower MMR when they both buy a Desolator. You should just keep the item because it's exactly the same thing. The uh, active doesn't stack. So without active, it's not really worth to buy uh, such item as a Desolator. Another thing that I haven't seen uh, lower MMR players do is after a team fight, go rush. Like that should be the obvious thing to do, right? After a team fight, instead of just pushing, because you're trying to get an advantage for the next team fight also. Especially if the words aren't pushed in. For example, right now, as you can see, Raiden is just winning a team fight, right? One guy's dead, two guys dead. I is gonna return here with the relocate, so he's gonna die also. So if he pause right here. They're dead for 60 seconds, 40, 36. One core of the enemies are dead for 60 seconds. One entire minute. Roche is right here. Right here. It's very, very close. And they can easily do it, right? Mirana arrows for 5 seconds of Roche. It's super easy. They have a lot of damage. They have two Daedaluses, actually. Daedalus and Daedalus. So it, it, it should be obvious play, right? They just go Roche and then try to push. But what ends up happening is they just push meat. They just walk meat, meat. This tower is almost dead anyway, so it doesn't really impact anything by taking it. Then they go chase the gyrocopter. Yeah, they get it, but it's a support, as you can see, 6.2 towers on network. And then invokers back up again. Which, you know, doesn't really matter, but the thing is, they got a tower that was like 200 HP, instead of taking an Aegis. Which is, uh, the most important objective is Aegis, mid game and late game. Aegis, cheese, shard, a lot of stuff. Like, a lower MMR players don't really think about this. It's super, super important to just uh, take ages before pushing or making any major plays. Especially if you just want a team fight, so you know you're stronger than enemies. That means that you get a free ages, and you get a lot of gold just by killing Rosh. The thing is that since you already won a team fight, they will be afraid of contesting, right? And if you can force a fight at Rosh if they want to contest you, that's another free team fight for you. Since you just won a team fight, that means you're already stronger. So yeah, just try to take Rosh, especially if you're really, really close to it after a team fight. Oh, I just noticed what ends up happening. Is they are, are um, we'll try to Rosh right now. They take a team fight at Rosh here and uh, end up losing it, I believe. Boy is just dying here. It's gonna get killed, no mana. Yeah. Uh, the main thing about this is that they refuse to take the free rush. But another thing about Void in this matchup is you always should think about what can kill you at what point in the game. What do you need as items? What do I itemize against? And what do you buy? Obviously. So 
his item says, okay, I have a bit of survivability in SNY, and the is, oh, I have damage. So, if I look at enemy heroes, is what do I need to be careful about? First thing is Invoker, has EMP, so I won't be able to use my time mock, or even Chronosphere, if he Barna Birds me. Another thing is, uh, they have dual. With Blade Mail, Blink, uh, dual on top of him, he will 100% die almost always. I mean, he'll 100% die, it doesn't matter. Maybe if someone in his team saves him, but uh, it's not likely. So, he needs to itemize a bit against Invoker, so he doesn't get mana burn. And against a Legion Commander, right? Dual. What I would be buying is something like a Lincoln Sphere, which is obviously uh, what he should be doing. Another thing that is pretty important is Monkey King. So against Monkey King, you can't really Chronosphere around him, right? Because he has Agnims, and if he has Ul down, you will just die. So you also need a bit of armor. If I were this void, I would go something like SNY, yeah, it's pretty good. But before that, I would buy Mask of Madness, uh, SNY, Lincoln Sphere, BKB. I would just get as tanky as possible, so I don't die. Because the enemies are going to get affected by time dilation, and they're going to get bashed by me. So if I'm just tanky enough, they will die. But what ends up happening is, he didn't itemize correctly, he has a data loss. Like, imagine if this would be a BKB or Lincoln Sphere, right? He just... Time walks in, he has no mana, got all his mana burned by Invoker. And then gets dual, he wins the duel, but still has no mana and nothing, so he just dies. Another super important thing is that you need to buy a stick. So itemizing correctly is super super important. It's one of the most important things in the game. As you can see, they they're pressing a lot of spells on the dire team. So if he would have if he would have had a stick, he could get the mana, right? As you can see, he's still okay here. Two seconds on time walk. And right now, if you could have pressed the stick and walk towards here, you can stick and then just time walk here, and he might be okay. So the main thing is to itemize correctly in this clip. Data loose and no stick. Try to get defensive items as a second item always. First one should be allowing you to farm a bit better. For example, let's look at this Monkey King. I believe his first item was Maelstrom. They're neither BKB or X. They're both sort of defensive items, right? Maelstrom is offensive, so you can farm a bit faster. And then BKB, because they have a lot of magical damage and spells to press on him. And then X. X would be also considered defensive items here. So first item should be an item that allows you to farm faster, and the second item uh, to be a defensive one, or an item that allows you to farm safely, which is still defensive item. As you can see, other places in the game has Midas, uh, Blink, Agony, Scepter, and Invoker, and is buying a BKB. Same as Legion. Um, is my BKB now. Blink, so she can be useful, she can do her job, which is Blink Duel someone, Blade Melt, so she can kill Void, as we just saw here. And then BKB, defensive item. Yeah, this guy also has a Lincoln Sphere, defensive item. So it's pretty important to itemize correctly. Another thing to uh, try to avoid doing is picking the same type of hero, right? As the type of heroes that get countered by the uh, exact thing. For example, in this game, Bloodseeker counters like the, almost everyone in the enemy team with this hero choice. The first thing, as we saw here, it's a gang easily executed on Pangolier. Just gets ruptured and can't do anything. He can't really press Q. Even if he had it off cooldown, because Raptor is doing a lot, a lot of damage on him. Same with ultimate. He can't really roll away if he would have an ultimate or later in the game, because he's just gonna get ruptured and then killed. He, sh uh, he has to stop the ultimate, so he just gets countered by that um, that type that type of uh, spell in this game. Another thing would be Razor, right? What does Razor want to do? He just wants to run in and. Uh, static link someone. Bloodseeker could just rupture him and then he has to sit in place. So they could focus him or he can get static link off or a lot of damage from it. And another important thing is Juggernaut, the carry matchup. Juggernaut also gets countered by Bloodseeker. Exactly the same thing. He gets ruptured. It doesn't really matter if Juggernaut has uh, spin because he does pure damage. He pierces BKB. In this case, he pierces spin. So he can't really play around the team fight as he would want to with Blade Fury, run around because he would just get ruptured and yeah, pure damage as you can see. 
So he counters the whole enemy team basically. Because of that he's able to easily win this game in because of the rupture I believe. As you can see twenty seven minutes in they're super hard uh super hard winning and ahead of the enemies. Just because he was able to set up a lot of kills as you can see, nine two nine for his team. And they're able to pick off any uh kill that they want with any time he has rupture. So it's like seventy second cooldown. Every one minute, one core of the enemies is just gonna die, most likely. Let's just watch this team fight. Just drop the razor, instantly dead. Couldn't do anything. It's almost uncontrollable. Um, rupture in this case. Yeah, free kill. The last thing that uh, I believe should be done is just copy it pro uh, build if you're a lower MMR. Just look at your favorite professional player that plays the hero that you want to improve on or you know just test it out and just buy what they're buying because they already tested it they know it's good and that's why they're buying it instead of trying to uh, invent something or you know buy some unconventional item for a, a hero that you're playing. For example in this game this uh, void bot Swift Blink on Void, which doesn't really do anything for the hero, right? Swift Blink is an initi initiation item and ultra late game item. But he already has time up, right, to initiate with. So he doesn't really need the blink. It doesn't really do anything for his hero. He wastes like um, 6,800 gold for 25 agility that he doesn't really need. So the. Yeah, the item is a waste. He. I believe you just thought that they were gonna win anyway, so the die was winning for a period of time and then they came back. And yeah. You're just gonna buy this sweepling. I attribute their loss because they were they're going to lose on this sweepling purchase. Let's look at the, what's happening right here with the sweepling. They forced buyback, Shadowfin's alive. Their his teammates are dead. And now he has no buyback because of the sweepling. We just kept gold. Yeah, this is another thing. Just keep buyback. It's always important to have buyback. Since if you die, it just. Uh, yeah. We just lose the game. However, I still attribute this loss to the Swiftling purchase. Like, look at this. What happened? He. Um, Alright, so right here. He's tipping in. Swiftling in. Gets bashed. Doesn't really press BKB, but uh, that was a 7,000 gold item that he just used. He blinked in when he had Q anyway, right? So yeah, try to just copy builds that professional players are doing because they already tested it and know that it's good instead of trying to freestyle the build. <laughs> and yeah, also keep buyback. It's a super important thing. Thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you in the next video.